As an IT technician or any PC enthusiast in general, you probably came across this screen once or twice. And you've probably been wondering, what the fuck am I even looking at? You probably tried to type in some generic commands just to realize you have no idea what you're doing, so you head straight to Google and you end up on weird sketchy videos that lead to nowhere. Well, I remember the first time I encountered this show. I was a young boy, clueless, trying to pair someone's PC which had a bricked BIOS. The only thing that PC was able to boot to is the EFI shell. It had a bricked BIOS, you cannot change the boot order, and you cannot boot to anything because the boot order was all screwed and you cannot access the BIOS. And I didn't know how to use the EFI shell at the time. So as any IT professional will do, I went straight to Google, straight to YouTube, and started looking it up. Only to find most of the people out there were also clueless and had no idea how to actually use this thing. People didn't know how to use this thing. People always just tried to like tell you to avoid it or like try find a way around it, right? So you find a lot of videos of people trying to type exit to exit it or videos of people trying to change the boot order. So they actually never encountered it. Most of these videos led to nowhere. So after digging up for a while through like the fourth page of Google, halfway through the searches, I found some official documentation, some official PDF files from Intel that explains how to use it. And I read through it and I learned how to use it and ever since, it became one of the most useful tools I have in my stack of tools. AFI Shell can be really useful if you know how to use it. Understanding how it works saves me a lot of time in debugging boot issues and debugging bias issues. If you have like a weird issue where the computer does not boot for some reason and you have no idea why, even though you have everything co configured correctly, but it just does not boot, an AFI Shell can help you fix that problem or give you at least uh, an output. What is the error or what's happening? If you have like some weird issue with your bias where you can't access your bias or it's or it's break to some graphical issues then EFI shell can help you fix that also so that's why you should learn it and that's why today i'll be teaching you the damn thing so what's an EFI shell to put it simply an EFI shell is like a command prompt for your bio this UFI shell specification documentation describes it as the UFI shell is an environment that provides an api a command prompt and a rich set of commands that extends and enhances the EFI shell capabilities you can do a lot of different things with it, but you don't need to learn everything to use it. Basically, most of the time you're gonna use it in one of two ways. Either your PC doesn't boot, and you don't know why, or you're trying to fix your bias issues. So let's take a look at it in person. So first thing first, you're gonna come across this screen, and you're gonna panic, because you have five seconds, and you don't have enough time to read it, and you don't know what to press. Well, I'll, I'm here to tell you, it does not matter. It's gonna tell you like, a press escape to skip startup.nsh. Now, what is startup.nsh? According to this Intel uh, documentation of an AFI shell, a startup.nsh is an equivalent auto exec bat in the Windows DOS environment. Intel usually provides startup.nsh in a script system firmware update package. This script is used to perform all system firmware update tasks. So basically, every time you start up the AFI shell, it's gonna check if the file startup.nsh exists. And if, it's gonna, if it exists, it's going to execute it within 5 seconds. And usually this file is used to update your firmware. So when you start your PC and that file does not exist, it does not matter if it's going to like you know let this timer run or you know press space or whatever. Now, first thing first, what are we looking at in here? Now the only thing you need to worry about in here is FS volumes. FS0, 1, 2. These are volumes which are FAT32 which can be accessed. BLK is devices. You can do a few things with the devices, but it's kind of out of, out of the scope of this video, so I'm not going to go that in depth about that. Mainly today we're going to be looking at FS uh, drives, which are basically mounted volumes that you can access. Keep in mind, as far as I know, I think an EFI shell only really supports FAT32 and FAT16. So let's say if you have like a different uh, file format, let's say if you have an EXT4 or NTFS, I don't think it's going to show up there. So if your drives are not showing up, then probably it's because uh, they are not formatted the right format. They are not FAT32. Now, at any time, if you type in like uh, help, it's gonna show you a list of commands you can use. You'll be wondering how do will I like see all the commands because they don't like the commands are bigger than the screen. Well, if you use page up and page down, you can go up and down in these commands. If you want to do something but you don't know what's the command for it, or uh, you want to like have a description of what the command does, you can always type help. I find the command. Now you will see also that it cleared the screen. So there is, I don't have access to the volumes anymore. I don't remember the volumes. So how would I see the volumes? Well, the command for that would be map-r, r for refresh. And we'll show you the volumes all over again. Now, as I said, BLK, vo uh, BLK drives, you don't really need to worry about them unless you're doing something like very geeky. Uh, FS drives are uh, mounted volumes. Now to access any of these volumes, you gotta type fs and then the volume number. So that would be, for example, zero. And then you have to make sure that you have your dot dot from there. And press enter. Now we are inside that volume. 
So if I type ls, it's gonna show uh, the files on there. If you wanna change a different volume, uh, no matter where you are, you just gotta tap the volume. So fs1, like this. Now we're on fs1. fs2, now we're on fs2. Even though I'm deep in the file system, if I wanna change a different volume, all you gotta tap is just fs and the volume number, and then make sure you have the dot dot, and then boom. If you don't remember, which volume it is, you just gotta type map-r. Now it will give you a generic description of these volumes. For example, like the first one says CD-ROM. The second one just says the GUID. It doesn't really say any name. But you can always just go to like one of these and uh, check what's inside. So we got that out of the way. Help for help. Um, Map-r to show the drives. FS to go to the drive. And then directory or ls to uh, show what's inside the drive. I don't know if I explained that, but I should explain it. Uh, let's say if we are in this ls to show files to navigate just cd and then the folder name or directory name And then you're in there ls to show the more folders and cd to go to the folder And then you know ls to show more And so on if you want to go back Cd dot dot now we realize some of these things are blue and some are green And you'll also probably find some which are just gray Now what does that mean? Blue are directories, green are executables, gray are unknown. So they're just basically like normal file systems or like normal files. Files that end in .efi are executable files by the EFI shell. You can also type bcfg boot dump b. Now what this is gonna do is gonna show you the boot order. So it's gonna show you there's four devices or four things it can boot into and this is how they're ordered. So the first thing is CD-ROM, Thank you, second one is EFI misc, so that's a file on the drive that it can boot to. Same thing with the second one. And the fourth one is the UFI shell itself. And you can change this boot order by doing bcfg boot and then mv and then you change you put the, the number in, right? So like for example, like say I wanna I want to always boot in the FI shell. So I do 04 and then where do I move that? To 00. zero. Now to check that, again, bcfg boot dump b. Now, as you can see, the first option is gonna do, it's gonna boot to the EFI shell. So I've moved the EFI shell from the bottom of the list to the top of the list. Now every time the system resets, it's gonna boot to the EFI shell. So basically every uh, bootloader has an EFI file that you can execute and load into. So if there is for any reason, your bootloader is broken or the system is unable to boot into the EFI file, this command prompt will output an error and tell you what the problem is or what the problem could be. Hopefully. Well, I'll show you how to boot in the system. So for example, I'm in, in the FS1 and I don't know what's, what's inside. I'm going to do ls and I can see that this is the bootloader uh, volume. This is the EFI volume. And how do I know that? Because it has an EFI folder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the EFI folder, go inside, ls, I get more folders. There is a folder called boot cd boot ls now there's a uh, file named boot x64 efi and dot efi extension means it's an executable that's why it showed up as green so what happens if i execute it well let's see and it just boots the system so now we boot up everything works perfectly fine knowing that you can now pretty much boot into any bootloader for example if you have a system and you accidentally like break your bootloader or you install more than one bootloader and you want to try to load into your old environment you can use an afi shell to load into the specific bootloader that you want on the specific drive you want you can also use this to like boot into like cd drives or like flash drives for, for example like i have a boot volume here which is going to be in my because this is a virtual machine it's going to see cd-rom so i'm going to go to there ls so this is linux installer uh, drive. If for some reason I'm unable to boot into this flash drive, I can just go to it, execute the, ex the executable file, and it will just take me to there. So now that you know how to use it, how to navigate around and boot into bootloaders and uh, debug issues, the second way this can be really useful is fixing your BIOS. Now this is a bit more complicated because it really depends on the manufacturer. Not really even the manufacturer, it depends on uh, the BIOS software. Since this is a virtual machine, I'm not gonna be able to do that much uh, with it because uh, it has a very specific BIOS. But let's say this machine has a bricked BIOS and I cannot boot to the BIOS. Okay, pressing delete won't get me anywhere and the BIOS GUI does not work. 
So using the shell, I can potentially fix that. Now, if I press map the R, I have three drives. In FS2, I have different firmware files and examples that I can show you. So I'm gonna go there, I'm gonna see LS to clear, and I'm gonna LS to show directory. Now you basically see three folders in here. The first one will be the easiest. Now this is a Z690 motherboard BIOS file. And if you can't install through the system, or you can't install, install through the operating system because it's broken and your BIOS is also broken and you wanna find a way to install it, uh, you can install through the EFI shell. So if I go to this folder, and I'm gonna clear, LS, you will see that we have a couple of executables in here. First, you have the EFI flash.efi, which is the EFI executable, and then you have the flash with NSH. Now, if you remember earlier, NSH is a script file that you can write any type of different script in it. You can make very complex like boot sequences. You can make very complex scripts to like in which order things boot and what the system does on, on boot. But I'm not gonna get into that because this can get really complicated. So this flash.nsh file is provided by the company. So basically, if I launch this flash.nsh Basically, it's gonna run the script that they've written and it's gonna flash my BIOS. And I don't have to do anything. It's just basically run the script, press enter, and do everything. I'm not gonna do this because this is not the right BIOS for the system, but I'm just here to show you uh, if you ever to encounter this kind of like a BIOS uh, format, how to use it. Now, let's say that they don't provide you the SH5, they don't provide you the script uh, in order to flash your BIOS. Now, how would you do it? Now, if you find an executable on the ROM, Usually, now this is not always, okay, but usually, uh, you just type in the the executable name, in this case, the EFI flash with EFI, and then you type in the BIOS ROM. Now, I'm going to type this whole thing because it's a bit too long, but this is a pretty common format. So, they will provide an EFI tool, a file that ends with the .fi, and then they will provide a ROM that ends in like some weird uh, .rom or .f5b for this example. And what you usually need to do is the first command will be the EFI tool name, and then you will put in the ROM itself. So there is that. Now there is another example. I've also got here EFI flashing tool for the American Megatrend motherboard BIOSes. Now this is like the Swiss army knife of BIOS flashing. This tool was developed by Omega Megatrend for Omega Megatrend BIOSes. Now you may have an MSI motherboard or a Gigabyte motherboard, it does not really matter. If the BIOS itself was developed by Omega Megatrend, this tool should work. There is a good example of this. this is a, a documentation provided by Azrock. Since the BIOS is developed by American Megatrends, they can just use the tool that American Megatrends provides. And that tool will work on most American Megatrend BIOSes. So it's a very good tool to have. Uh, and this basically goes through and shows. It basically, you put the tool in name, just as I told you, and then the ROM file. The tool ends in .efi, and then the ROM file ends in whatever, this one ends in .30, and then you put in uh, dash P, B, and the spaces in between. P is gonna start from program the main BIOS, B is gonna start from program the block, and N is gonna start from program the uh, NVRAM. So this is generally how we will do use this tool specifically. Now, even though this BIOS is not designed by American Megatrends, we can still take a look at this tool. So, for example, if I type in the tool name, .efi, and launch this tool, it's going to tell me this is America Megatrend Firmware Update Utility. Copyright 1985-2022. So, this is still in use currently because it's updated this year. And I'm going to show you some of the commands you can use. This, is, this can be really useful. For example, like, slash O will get you to export your current firmware and to a file. So if you want to back up your current firmware, you can export it to a file. D is to verify the integrity of the firmware. GMD is to send special commands to the BIOS itself. S is to display the current ROM ID. And that's pretty much it. So a quick recap. EFI shell is like the command prompt for your BIOS, the command prompt for your motherboard. You can use it to boot to any bootloader anywhere. It can execute .efi files. If you have like installed multiple bootloaders or you have broken your bootloader and you don't know what's happening, you can try to boot and do it and like it will probably give you an error explaining what's happening. You can also use it to recover your BIOS. So if you have a bricked BIOS and you can't uh, access the BIOS, you can use this tool to reflash your BIOS. I gave you a pretty generic ways on how to flash your BIOS, but I really recommend looking into your manufacturer's official support just to make sure that things go right, because if you're accidentally flashing the wrong ROM or you actually accidentally do something wrong, you could actually break it even further. Make sure you, of course, check your official documentation from your motherboard's manufacturer. That's not the only things you can do with an EFI shell. 
uh, you can do a lot of like advanced things. Like for example, if I when I mentioned earlier, the .nsh files are basically script files which you can program to do different things. And basically, see a, a quick example of how it works. You can write programs to these files, and then you can execute them uh, in the AFI shell, and they can like do um, they can automate things for you basically. And uh, this is pretty advanced like server stuff. So you probably don't need much of that. But if you are curious and you want to learn more about it, I'm going to provide both of these documentations. This one is going to be basic instruction for using the uh, extensible firmware interface. This one is by Intel and it's only 12 pages. And if you want to really get in depth, then this will be the one for you to read. It's 238 pages uh, provided by the UFI forums. AFI shell is pretty uh, simple, straightforward to use. Uh, it's one of those tools that you never knew that you needed until you learn it. But once you learn it, it can save you a lot of time. Now you know, what an AFI shell is, how to navigate it, how to boot using the AFI shell, and how to fix your uh, brick bias. Hopefully this video will reach out to someone's Google search and will actually be useful to them and fixes their problem. Now with that being said, goodbye and have a wonderful day. See ya.